The economy is on the verge of another mega recession, depression. The Dow crashes into bear market. This is the fastest drawdown from a peak into a bear market in history. Around the world, factories have gone offline, schools have been suspended, and entire cities have been locked down. The stock market and the economy are going down like the Titanic. This is now about the economy. The world economy is not just slowing down, it has literally come to a screeching halt. Manufacturers in China report operating at 50% capacity, with 56% of normal staff. Supply disruptions are already occurring at the ground level. Almost 75% of companies have reported supply chain disruptions, according to a new survey released by the Institute for Supply Management ISM. The real exposure is companies with no real assets to weather this storm. So much debt, so much just-in-time cash flow. Companies that have been around for decades but can't survive a two-month revenue interruption. Tourism industry worldwide collapsing. With countries issuing travel advisories, airlines cancelling flights, and popular tourist destinations being put on high alert, people are avoiding crowds, airports, and travel in general. Museums and archaeological sites are closed, events cancelled. Atlanta, the busiest airport on the planet, was empty yesterday. This may only be a flu, but it is an economic bubonic plague. Angela Merkel says she expects around 60 to 70 percent of Germans will be infected, which equates to about 53 million people. There are going to be massive implications to the economy with things like travel, airlines, gasoline sales, even real estate with spring home buying season ramping up. Dow down 20 percent from all-time high only a month ago, and not far above the break-even level for 2019. While 1500 points below the break-even for 2018. The housing market is next. The Fed repo goes nuts every day. Trillions in derivative contracts, and every time you see wild swings happening, which is every day, you can think that these contracts are being activated. Think of it like fire insurance and 1% of all homes burn on a given night, a very small percentage but enough total loss to collapse all fire insurance companies. The stock market crash means the banks and pension funds will crash as well. A lot of companies will go under as well. The Dow companies, after depleting their cash on stock buyback, will seek handout assistance from the taxpayer. We never really recovered from the recession. Banker bailouts at taxpayer expense, coupled with QE propping up the economy. And they've even got their point man Mnuchin raiding the US Treasury. All that coupled with trillions in unfunded liabilities. Something's gotta give. Issues that have been stored up for years and years and years have been triggered by the virus and everything else. But it's back to those fundamental questions about too much debt right the fact that it's not an affordable way of dealing with the issues and all the consequences of all that debt are just not being taken into account. The central banks around the world are printing confetti to oblivion. The biggest concern is the ballooning deficit and subsequent debt coupled with the reality that with interest rates as low as they are, and the Fed holding over $4.3 trillion in debt that should the economy falter, nobody has the necessary maneuvering room to actually do anything about it. Short of devaluing the dollar to ridiculous levels that would only serve to increase energy costs. And no, we're not energy independent, so another ot era devaluation of 45% would likely quadruple gas at the pump prices once again, crippling the economy at a time we could least afford it. Indicators? The lack of ability and effect of Federal Bank Reserve policy to fix the problem. The problem? Increased debt is necessary to keep the overall growth continuing. If everything is a bubble and we create new bubbles to get out of it, then how can we be wrong to say that another depression is on its way? Europe is in shambles, and now Asia is beginning to go the same way. The problem is not the flu or the supply lines. The real problem is debt, mountains, and mountains of debt. The building of an entire economy on money that is not really there. This isn't rocket science. As long as supply lines with China are shut down, nothing except the infusion of phony money will hold the market up, and so far, it's not working. They are not going to let it drop vertically, even though ultimately, it is going down. This is a controlled demolition, so either sit it out and wait patiently for the bottom or try to time the market and take advantage of the volatility. No one alive has experienced the magnitude of this disaster unfolding. Get what you can out of the market and scram while you can. If you haven't noticed, this Friday is the 13th. 
I think we're setting up for a massacre, all-out panic, multiple market halts, and breaks, capitulation selling. Welcome back to the Atlantis Report. Please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels. I do upload videos there, too, on a daily basis. You'll find the links in the description box. Thank you. The sellers need cash. The few that do have cash are reluctant to buy. There are no dry powder money on the sidelines, everyone has been all in the financial markets for the past two years. Right now, cash is king. You need it to keep the lights on. Credit lines are drying up everywhere. We saw this same thing happen in 2008, yet nobody is prepared yet again. Nobody could have seen this coming. Anyone losing money right now has few excuses. Just simply viewing the bear, bull trends should have signaled to everyone that we were overdue, and they should have taken their gains a while ago and cared less about squeezing every last dollar out of the markets. I guarantee that there's a lot of folks these past couples of weeks who would rather have taken their gains in December 2019 and missed the top than lost their shirts in February, March 2020. The market can, and probably will, keep heading down, and the US economy is dead in the water as long as China is shut down. When things recover, it'll be like a train starting in bits and bursts. And more good news, our federal budget deficit so far through only the first five months of this fiscal period is a whopping $625 billion. Or to put it another way, $0.6 trillion. But I estimate that soon, our $1 trillion annual budget deficits will end up becoming $3 to $4 trillion deficits as our economy continues to implode. The government can't take in revenue on capital losses and negative earnings, and people who will eventually be out of work won't be paying payroll taxes, but will instead be getting unemployment checks. This economy is toast. By the way, where is Mnuchin with his PPT call, is he out of minutes or something? This will hit home when layoffs start. 401k investments from paycheck stop. Unable to pay bills. People living paycheck to paycheck find empty store shelves. Tourist travel come to screeching halt. Kids wanting to help elderly parents but know if they do they get it then to their kids. It will be unmanageable. And if it mutates before vaccine. You can think of many more connections of despair. Welcome to the moment where the curtain is pulled on the wizard. Now even the sheeple will learn their government is at best incompetent or, at worst, their prison guards. The banksters and other masters of the universe know nothing but to steal. The entire notion of Western democracy superiority is a hoax. So, this is your chance for real freedom. Of course, you will choose safety and so do not deserve liberty, but at least for once, you cannot sleepwalk through life with your delusions. These are the best of times. The government failed out of the gate, and it is now too late. In the next couple of weeks, you will see many many more cases confirmed and many more deaths. Currently, there aren't even enough masks for hospital workers to wear to protect themselves or patients. Wait three or four more weeks, when the hospitals and medical system are rapidly being overwhelmed by critical care cases for which there is not nearly enough capacity to treat. Looking at Italy, the future looks bleak. Our obese Western democracies based on lazy, infantile, self-centered people do not have the courage or fortitude for any battle. Superior armaments will be defeated by a little virus. The fast-moving COVID-19 is spreading across the globe, and just how bad things become remains to be seen, but it will be ugly. This is not over. It is just starting. COVID-19 may be the catalyst for a global economic reset long overdue. Because of hidden agendas, incompetence, and a lack of testing, we have no idea how far this has spread across the world. America needs to wake up. This is real. Recovery? How about prepare for permanent liquidation? This is the big one. The 10,000 year event. A bubble so gargantuan it takes the entire West down. Every time over the last 40 years that we have enacted a wave of tax cuts for the rich in the idiotic expectation that doing so will bring on economic growth and job creation, what has actually happened is a recession has soon followed. Predicting when the recession will materialize statistically, is a bit difficult. But knowing that it will eventually materialize is a certainty. What happens is that tax cuts extract wealth from the working class, to be delivered to the wealthy class and the corporations. That is what they are designed to do. 
While tax cuts for the benefit of the rich never result in economic expansion, for obvious reasons, they always do, without exception, eventually result in economic contraction and the loss of jobs, as the working class struggles to repay the national debt necessitated by the government borrowing required to make up the revenue shortage caused by the tax cuts for the rich. It happens every time. It will happen again as a result of the Trump tax cuts of 2017. The only question is when. Cognitive dissonance occurs when a person holds two or more contradictory beliefs, ideas, or values, or participates in an action that goes against one of these three, and experiences psychological stress because of that. According to this theory, when two actions or ideas are not psychologically consistent with each other, people will do all in their power to change them until they become consistent. The discomfort is triggered by the person's belief clashing with new evidence, facts, perceived, wherein they will try to find a way to resolve the contradiction to reduce their discomfort. Normalcy bias is a belief people hold when there is a possibility of a disaster. It causes people to underestimate both the likelihood of a disaster and its possible effects because people believe that things will always function the way things normally have functioned. This may result in situations where people fail to adequately prepare themselves for disasters, and on a larger scale, the failure of governments to include the populace in its disaster preparations. About 70% of people reportedly display normalcy bias in disasters. Whether this outbreak was accidental or intentional is now moot. Over the past few years, the US government has been drilling and prepping for urban pacification, including arming many branches of various agencies. Millions of rounds of hollow-point bullets, massive food storage programs, reams of executive orders, and continuity of government programs in place. What do you think they were expecting? This situation would be a perfect out for Trump and the banks to reset the unsustainable financial system after all, who is to blame for such an act of God? Or so they could claim. The perfect black swan. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like. Share. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too on a daily basis. You'll find the links in the description box. Thank you.